Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and I'm a senior software engineer at Amazon. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Ray Beamrunner project and our vision to develop a unified framework for managing mixed purpose batch streaming and ML workloads. Uh, since this is a short presentation, I'll be the only one talking to you today, but what I'm talking to you about has been put together in collaboration with my colleague Jaejun, who's a software engineer working on Raycore at any scale, and Shandan, who's a senior software engineer working on streaming data processing at Amazon. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the motivation for this project. Uh, why do we need another beam runner in the first place? Don't we already have enough of those? What's missing from the ones that we already have? So to help us understand our motivation for creating another beam runner, I think it helps to review some recent ML trends over the last decade. The first important trend that we've observed is an over 10x yearly increase in the compute demands required to train ML models, which results in needing 1 million times more compute power to train ML models in 2018 than in 2012. From 2015 to 2019, we also observed a 10x increase in ML memory demands every year and a half. These growth rates outpace Moore's law at its peak, and vastly outpaced Moore's Law today, since we're now looking at doubling transistor counts about once every 20 years. Finally, the last trend we've observed is increased integration between ML and data processing workflows. This has led to more data science and ML devs doing data exploration and analysis work to curate the vast amounts of data needed to train their models. Taken together, this means that today's ML workloads are increasingly distributed and increasingly integrated with data processing. Also, since these devs prefer to work in Python, it's great to have Beam's portability framework to simplify integration of Python with data processing. To better understand ongoing trends between data processing and ML, here's a graph from Slash Data showing the percentage growth in data science and ML devs involved in data exploration and analysis work versus other ML workflow stages. While data processing has remained the most common stage for them to be involved in for the past two years, we've seen a 10% growth over this time. And if we look at this graph, we can see that Python was the second most popular programming language measured by Slash Data in Q1 of 2022. Notably, Python is most popular for data science and ML, while Java is least popular for data science and ML. Since we want to meet data science and ML devs where they're at, we want to provide them with a data processing framework that integrates seamlessly with all the Pythonic tools they're already using. Now, we chose Beam to close these data exploration and analysis gaps for a few reasons. First, its ability to port the same code between runners reduces initial barriers to having a user adopt a new data processing framework. In other words, we didn't want everybody to have to rewrite their existing batch and streaming pipelines against a new set of APIs. We also wanted to leverage Beam's unified API for batch and streaming instead of asking users to use one set of APIs for batch and another set for streaming. Beam also reduces the amount of undifferentiated work required for us to spin up a solution to these problems, since we now just need to implement a minimal set of distributed Beam primitives to inherit support for Beam's existing library of additional features for things like windowing, triggers, refinements, data transformation, and data I.O. Finally, the last and perhaps most important reason why we chose Beam is because many Ray users were asking for it. So now that we know why we chose to work with Beam, let's talk a bit more about what it means to create a Beam runner for data science and ML devs. So in short, we want whatever runner we build to integrate natively with the Pythonic tools that data science and ML devs already know and love. This means that we want them to be able to seamlessly integrate their Beam pipelines with data science tools like Pandas, NumPy, Dask, and PyArrow, and with common ML libraries like Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. Furthermore, we didn't want to use multiple different distributed compute frameworks to author and execute mixed purpose batch streaming and ML pipelines. In fact, we wanted one unified compute framework to rule them all. Specifically, we wanted to distribute and run our batch streaming and ML workloads on the same cluster and give these workloads access to the same shared memory pools. This removes many inefficiencies that start to sneak in if you instead use multiple distributed systems to run these pipelines, since transferring data between them typically requires high latency operations to read and write your data between disk or cloud storage. We also want to batch streaming and ML code to be able to live side by side in a single Python application. We didn't want to have to take a dependency on a different distributed compute framework for each domain. Also, to help facilitate the transition from data science or ML experiment to distributed production cluster, we wanted to ensure that the same code can run on either your laptop or a cluster. And we wanted to do all this without reinventing solutions to common distributed systems problems like task scheduling or cluster management along the way. So given this lofty wish list, it may come as no surprise to learn that we didn't feel like any existing theme runner completely met our needs. 
But why did we settle on Ray as a solution to these problems? To answer this, let's discuss what Ray gives us. At a high level, Ray is an open source framework for distributed computing that can be divided into three broad layers. The most foundational layer is Ray Core, which gives us the basic building blocks we need to develop almost any type of distributed app. The second layer is Ray Libraries, which builds on top of Ray Core and provides high level abstractions for distributed ML workflow development. This gives us integration with some common Pythonic ML tools that we are looking for. It also abstracts away common distributed system challenges inherent to managing clusters for different distributed compute environments. The third layer here is the Ray ecosystem, which integrates Ray with other popular open source projects for ML, data science, and workflow management. These ecosystem projects close out most additional integrations we are looking for with Pythonic ML and data science tools. Taken together, these layers satisfy our prior requirements for a unified distributed compute framework to author and run mixed batch streaming and ML workflows. To elaborate on how Ray is able to provide the substrate for unified distributed compute, it helps to understand some of the fundamental building blocks of Ray Core. For example, Ray's tasks let you define and run stateless distributed functions, while actors let you use stateful distributed classes with immutable attributes. Ray's distributed on cluster object store also gives us efficient immutable object storage and zero copy exchange of these objects between processes running on the same node. This object store works together with Ray's horizontally scalable scheduler to reduce object copies and overall network traffic between nodes, since it prefers to schedule tasks on local nodes whenever they already have task input objects cached in memory. Taken together, these components support efficient, scalable, and low latency task scheduling and object transfer between distributed batch, streaming, and ML workers running on the same cluster. To illustrate how Ray is used in practice, here's a simple Python script that uses Ray tasks to square 1 million numbers in parallel. Notice that this looks pretty close to standard Python code, but we first called Ray.init to initialize Ray, added a Ray.remote decorator to our function to change it into a task, scheduled asynchronous task invocations by adding dot remote between the function name and its input args, and then used ray.get to synchronously materialize a, a list of return values for all scheduled tasks. Ray actors work in a manner similar to tasks. For example, here's a Python script that uses a Ray actor as a distributed counter. Again, this looks pretty close to standard Python code, but we've added a ray.remote decorator to our class to change it into an actor, added dot remote between our class or method names and their input arguments, and again, use ray.get to block on materializing the return values of all asynchronously scheduled futures when they're ready. Since Ray automatically synchronizes asynchronous updates to the counter shared state, this program is resilient to race conditions and will always print out an ordered list of values from one to 10. Finally, the last reason we chose Ray as our underlying distributed compute framework is because early experiments have shown it to be very promising for batch and streaming data processing. For example, you can see my 2021 Ray Summit presentation where we achieved an over 90% latency and efficiency improvement versus Spark on petabyte scale batch change data capture workloads running against an Amazon internal data catalog. You can also watch Ant Financial's 2020 Ray Summit presentation on using Ray to scale mixed purpose batch streaming and ML workloads across massive 200,000 CPU clusters. Finally, the ExoShuffle paper shows the potential of Ray for more generic data processing workloads, including a notable 1.8x performance improvement versus Spark on the 100 terabyte TerraSort benchmark. Uh, so now that we've told you why we're building a new Beam Runner and why we're using Ray to build it, you might be wondering when you can actually start using it. So here's the current state of affairs, like an old 90s website on GeoCities, the Ray Beam Runner project is currently under construction, but you can still peruse at your leisure and maybe even drop us a note to let us know you stop by. We're currently building our runner in Python on top of the Beam Portability framework. We're testing out a single process prototype to ensure that everything looks functionally correct before we double down task distribution and optimization. We're also working on the foundational CI/CD pipelines and test suites that we'll need to keep releases coming up with a consistent cadence and quality moving forward. A lot of the things we're working on also depend on lower level Ray data processing frameworks. So we're continuing to work on making the necessary improvements to Ray data sets and other relevant data centric projects in the Ray ecosystem. Once we're done with current work items, here's what we plan to do over the next year. In our path to a Ray Beam Runner 1.0 release, we minimally need to transition our single process Ray Beam Runner prototype to a distributed multi process prototype, and then start working on improvements to latency, efficiency, and scalability across various workloads. We also need to develop a minimum viable set of connectors between Ray and Beam that will let us do things like import or export Ray datasets into and out of Beam pipelines. 
Finally, we want to make sure that you all have enough instructional docs available to make it easy to start unifying your existing batch streaming and ML pipelines with our runner. And in closing, I'd like to welcome everyone watching to also get involved with the Raybeam Runner project. You can visit our project on GitHub, where it currently lives as part of Ray Project. And while you're there, feel free to pick up an open issue or work on a pull request. You can also chat with us in the Beam channel of the Ray Community Slack, or just review the latest updates in the progress and design docs that we keep pinned to the channel. So thanks everyone for watching, and stay tuned in to GitHub, Slack, and upcoming Ray and Beam community events for updates.